So I picked up this lawn mower yesterday. Got a pretty good deal on it. Uh, the owner said that the engine ran when he parked it about a year ago. Uh, he claimed it had some transmission troubles and that's why he stopped using it. Uh, I've already cleaned things up here and I installed a I installed a new battery and I'm able to get it to turn over. I used a little bit of starting fluid down in uh, the hole here and I can get it to start but that's all it'll do no matter how much starting fluid I spray in there it just won't just won't stay running so anyways um, I'm pretty sure we're, de we're dealing with a carburetor problem here so I'm going to uh, get into the fuel system uh, and figure out what's going on here and try to make this old Cub Cadet run again. It's a model LT1018 hydrostatic drive and we had a little problem with some bees but we took care of them. Uh, what we have is a, an in, a Briggs & Stratton Intec 18.5 horsepower OHV engine. It's a pretty good engine by Briggs & Stratton. So yeah, let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. And it looks like someone has already been messing with the uh, fuel system a little bit. So we're going to have to uh, make sure they didn't screw anything up. As you can see, the fuel pump is just dangling there. It's supposed to be mounted right about there, I believe, on that nut, or that bolt. One of the things I want to check um, is this anti-backfire solenoid on the bottom of the carburetor here. When you turn the key, to the accessory position, you should hear a click out of that component. Um, so let's go ahead and turn the key here and listen to see if we hear a click. So see, that tells us the, uh, the solenoid is working because you can hear that. I'm turning the key on and off and you can hear it clicking. So we know that component's good. Uh, another thing we could test to see if, if the fuel pump is still working correctly. And one way we can test that is to just <clears throat> disconnect the output hose. And while we turn the engine over, the fuel pump should pump fuel. It's a vacuum operated fuel pump, so whenever the engine is turning over, it's pumping fuel. I'm going to turn the key over and we'll see if we have gas pumping out. We're good there. And if you look, you'll see the air filter's not in too bad a shape, so it's still um, filtering air and it's in good shape. I will show you how to get into this carburetor. We're going to try and um, clean it out on the lawnmower. Rather than taking the entire carburetor off, you want to disconnect the wires. This is one of the tools you will need to do this job. You can see it's a half inch wrench that I have filed down to be narrow on the end. Um, you have to have that to get in above that solenoid there. You're gonna have some gas come out, so you'll want a rag or a bowl underneath. Right. Sometimes you have to wiggle it a little bit. And there is a little bit of sediment and moisture in there that we'll want to clean out. It looks like the rubber gasket stayed in place on the carburetor. We might be able to reuse it. You have a gasket that goes on your fuel solenoid here that you don't want to lose. This is the plunger, the little device that makes the clicking sound. When you turn the key, it sucks that little plunger in. And when you turn off the key, that little plunger pops back up and prevents any fuel from entering the combustion chamber and, chamber and causing a backfire. That's why they call it a backfire solenoid. Did you see that brass jet right there? That's probably the component that's plugged right now. So that there is your main jet. And uh, I can tell this one is plugged just by looking at it. And what you want to do is get some wire or something to poke in there and clear that jet out. 
You can remove it with a screwdriver if it's really dirty, but I think I just need to poke something through it at this point. Try to clear it out a little bit. I'll spray a little bit of carburetor cleaner in there. Also want to spray some up in here. Make sure it's clear up in there also. And with some compressed air, I can clean it out too. So you'll want to make sure the carburetor is as clean as you can get it. If it's really bad and dirty, you'll have to remove the carburetor from the engine, but I think we'll be okay with this one. So you can see now, hopefully, that that hole is clear. And uh, it's time to reassemble the carburetor. Float bowl is good and clean. I think the gasket is still good. We'll find out. We'll tighten this down. Not too tight, but tight enough to seal things up. Right about there. And then you reconnect the plug. And so now when we go to test it out, we will have to turn the engine over a little bit um, for the fuel pump to fill up the carburetor because we've emptied the carburetor. Let's see what happens here. Should probably take all this out of there. So the carburetor is filling up with gas right now, hopefully. I think I'm going to replace the spark plug. So I'm glad I decided to change this spark plug. If you look here, you can tell it's it's all gooped up, it's fouled. And it's a crappy spark plug manufacturer, so we need to put a new one in there. Let's try this again. A little bit of starting fluid to help. <laughs> 